time. I'm just gonna give a little bit of time as people get comfortable and start getting settled in front of the computer. Thanks so much to the two of you being here. We're so excited for this Thank conversation. You. Yeah. I'm just gonna give it a few more seconds as people come in. I see people rolling in. We want everybody to get settled and get in a good place to listen. All right. All right, I think we'll get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Heidi, and I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator at Politics and Prose. Thank you for joining us in partnership with Indies Unite, a group of independent bookstores across the country, and bookshop.org for a special event with Juju Morales and Aureli Morales. This is the first event in our Hear Our Voices, Share Our Stories series, dedicated to children's books fostering productive conversations on US immigration. We will drop the book purchases links for Juji's books, Bright Star, and Aureli's book, Aureli is a Dreamer, into the chat. Books are available in both English and in Spanish. Please order from one of your preferred independent bookstores listed in the link. At the end of the presentation, we'll get to audience questions and answer as many as possible. You can ask a question by clicking on the Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen and enter your question there. You can also upvote a question you like and want most answered. We do ask for everyone to be respectful of one another and any questions and comments. Now on to our guests. Born in Jalapa, Mexico, where she is currently reside, residing, Juju Morales lived for many years in the San Francisco Bay Area, where she still maintains close relationships with booksellers and librarians. A professional storyteller, dancer, choreographer, puppeteer, and artist, she has won the prestigious Pirabelle Prey Award for illustration six times for Just a Minute, a trickster tale and counting book, Los Gatos, Black on Halloween, Just in Case, a trickster tale and Spanish alphabet book, Nino Wrestles the World, Viva Frida, also a Caldecott honor book, and Dreamers. Bright Star is her most recent book. Aureli Morales Romero was born in Puebla, Mexico, but was raised in New York City. She's a DACA recipient, and Aureli is a Dreamer is her debut children's book. A graduate of CUNY Brooklyn College with a bachelor's degree in childhood bilingual education, she currently works as a substitute teacher. One day, Aureli hopes to have her own classroom where she can teach children to value the power of storytelling and empower them to share their own stories. She lives in Brooklyn, New York with her family. We will now have a reading from both authors. We're going to start with Shuji, followed by Aureli. See you in a little bit. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So I'm, I'm receiving you here in Mexico, where I am right now. Um, I wasn't planning to be reading here from my car, but I'm, I'm uh, outdoors uh, painting a mural with a community mural with a lot of other women and it started raining. So I had to look for a better place where we could do um, our reading today. And we are going to read this book. Right start, and this is a story. Um, yeah, it's about um, a deer and her journey. She's going with her mother to find the things that she needs to live to survive to just exist. Um, and but at the same time, it's a story about many, many other animals. This is a story about the border and the many animals, people, plants, and the environment that is part of the, the borderlands. Uh, so for the reading of this book, you're gonna be, uh, need to be ready for some words in Spanish as well. And see if you can um, catch some of the animals that um, there are here. Some of them are big, so you will be able to see them well, but some other are really, really small. See if you can catch them. And see if you can get a sense of what the characters are feeling in the story. I'm gonna close my door here. There is a lot of noise outside, but we are going to start now. And it, this is Bright Star by Su Servidora Yuji Morales. And it begins like this. Bright Star by Yuji Morales. Child, you are awake. Breathe in, then breathe out, hermosa criatura. You are alive. 
you are a bright star inside our hearts. Mira, some things you can see, others you must find. So you search, you are ready, cosita pequeña. Let's go, vámonos. And the word vámonos is how we say let's go in Spanish. Oh no, what is that? Look and listen, be alert. Te amo, corazoncito tembloroso. Breathe in, despacito. Then gently breathe out, lie low. We want you safe. And then of course the words te amo means I love you. This mom is telling her baby that she loves her. She has sensed there is some danger. And now she's doing what um, deers and other animals do and also some humans do, which is to put her baby in a place where she might be safer, where she's not gonna be found. No matter where you are, you are a bright star inside our hearts and see if you can find where the baby is, where the deer is, which is in the other page. <laughs> Let's see, we can move the screen to the next one. No more, I'll show it here. See if you can see it. There she is hiding. And if you feel afraid and you begin to hurt inside, Let it out, shout it loud. Let the world know what you feel. No, she says, there are a lot of feelings here. Because there is something that, that, that should not be. The earth murmurs your story. We are here to protect you. You are not alone. Listen. And if we could listen, maybe we will hear even the flapping of those wings from those bats. All mother bats about to have babies or already carrying them. And we might hear the falling of the rain or even the cracking of the cocoon as the moth is born. Sometimes silence tells you secrets. And you imagine a new story. You imagine the most beautiful world. You are a bright star inside our hearts. And if you look closely, you might be able to see what animals these children are representing. You can see it in their clothing, the, their colors or the designs that they are wearing. And when we finish a story here in Mexico, we always say like this, y colorín colorado, este cuento se ha acabado. And that means that's the end of the reading of our story. Wow, Juju, thank you so much for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. I, it, it really makes me feel like seen. Um, and so wow. I want to ask you, what inspired you to write Bright Star or Lucero? Well, well, after I uh, um, published uh, Dreamers, I was going around uh, reading this book that celebrated um, how I and my child as an immigrant had been welcomed into this country, how a lot of hands had reached out to help us with the transition and 
allowing us to find our place here. And while I was doing that, I was seeing a lot of things happening at the border. And it's not like things at the border were happening just now. There have always been happening as we know it. But then it became very evident that the administration was making sure that people were not gonna be welcome in a country like the United States. And I, I really wanted to, do, to make a book that explore what happens at the borderlands, especially because we imagine, I know that I did, I imagine the borderlands at this place were kind of unknown and dangerous and, um, and maybe nothing happens except uh, immigration. But then as, as I started researching for the book, um, I realized just how not true that is, how, how rich the life is in the borderlands, not only the human life, but also the plants, the animals. And I really wanted to make a book that accompanied children when they needed it, when they felt alone. I wanted to have like a song, like a blanket that I could give to children so that they knew that even if they were going through really difficult things, they were many, many people who are fighting for their well being they are fighting for them to be welcome, that, um, that in fact, we welcome them. And I, I wanted to do that with a book. So I, I'm glad that you say that you felt that there was a connection. I think, uh... oh no, I think we lost connection with Judy. Heidi, did you? Hi, Aureli. Yeah, I, I think we lost her for a minute. So if it's okay, do you want to, um, we'll have a chance to talk with her more on the other end, but do you want to read your story? Yes, of course. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. So I'm going to read from my book, Areli is a Dreamer. And this is a true story about my immigration journey from Mexico to the United States and having to live here in this country as an undocumented child. So this book is very special to me and I'm going to read a small part from it. Areli is a Dreamer, a true story written by Areli Morales, a DACA recipient, illustrated by the talented Luisa Uribe. At Abuela's house, Saturdays were filled with family and sunshine. Areli was good at playing al escondite and even better at chasing chickens. She could outrun her big brother Alex and their primas. When evening came, she sat around a noisy table and ate mounds of tortillas and pollo con frijoles for supper, her favorite. But Sundays were different. On Sundays, Areli and Alex sat in the stuffy living room, waiting and waiting for the phone to ring. Ring, ring. It is your mama and papa, said Abuela, from America. Hola, mama. Hola, papa, said Adeli in a small voice. Hola, mi niña, said mama. Did you get the toys we sent you? asked papa. Papa always asked about the toys. Sí, said Adeli. Gracias, mama. Gracias, papa. Mama and papa had been away for so long, they felt like strangers. When are you coming home? She asked. She knew the answer. Oh, mija, we can come back to Mexico, said Mama. We're trying to get you here to America with us. Your Mama and I dream of the day we would all be together, said Papa. We will send for you soon, I promise. When Areli hung up the phone, Alex tried to make her smile. 
Mama and Papa think about us all the time, he said. They're working hard, Mika, Abuela said, for all of us. They want us to have a better life. But why will Alex go to America first? And then me, Arelias, Abuela had told her the answer many times. Alex was born in America, so, you, so he can come and go. You were born here, so it's harder for you. How hard? Abuela didn't answer. Instead, she wrapped Areli in her arms. Your mama and papa want you all to be together as a family, but they weren't all together as a family that year. Mama and papa didn't come back for Areli's birthday or Dia de los Muertos or even Navidad. Then one night, Alex took out his suitcase. Where are you going? Adelie asked, but she already knew. You know where I'm going, Alex said. I'm going to Nueva York. He flashed her a big grin and gave her a drawing of the two of them in the yard with the chickens. So you won't forget me, he said. A few days later, he was gone. Now, when she waited for the calls from Mama and Papa, Adeli had to wait alone. That fall, Adeli started kindergarten at the school near her abuela's house. She was so proud to be at school. She learned to tie her shoes and write the letters of the alphabet. She played al escondite with her new friends. She barely thought of Nueva York at all. There's some illustrations of my life in Mexico. Until the day, Abuela greeted her with tears in her eyes. Areli, mija, you're leaving us, she said. Your mama and papa are sending someone to take you to New York, to live with them at last. Abuela's voice was shaking. I don't want to go to New York, Areli said. I want to stay here with you and my friends and my home. Please don't make me go, Abuela. If I can take care of you here, I would, my sweet but I am old and there is no future for you in Mexico. You don't understand now, but someday you will. And that's where I'm going to end this read aloud. Again, this is such a personal story. It is a true story about my journey to a new country and having to leave behind my home in Mexico, my abuela, my tios, my tias, my primas and primos and having to start all over a new country. And I definitely think, Judy, you can relate as in your book, Dreamers, you also describe your, your journey to this country with your son, your baby. Yeah, it's like we are both telling our stories here, even though they, they, they are not the same story. You came as a child, I came as an adult, I came as a mother, you came as some, someone's daughter and also someone's grandchild, right? Leaving your abuela behind and everything. There are a lot of things that even though they are different, we have in common, which, which I can sense like, like the way that we enter a new space, a new country and we feel insecure and we feel like, like, we don't have the tools to do well. I don't know, like how long did it take you to feel like you were comfortable in this place? I, it took several years. Um, I know that you found a sense of belonging in your library. Yes. I found a sense of belonging in school where I started to learn the language, starting, I started to make friends. And so, yeah, it's, it's a journey of trying to belong and then the people that help us belong. And I think that's the similarity in my book with Dreamers. Uh, and it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, yeah. So did, did you feel like, um, one of the things that I realized when, when I was making a book like Dreamers was that, uh, first of all, yes, I made a lot of mistakes, um, but also that I had a, a sense of who I was that look almost like, like, like they were doing me a favor, 
you know, like people of the United States were doing me a big favor by being here. And one of the things that I realized when I was making Dreamers was that as, as, as grateful as I am from being received, I also hope that uh, people feel grateful that people like you, like me and like many others actually come to a place like the United States because we are so valuable and it took me a long time to realize that it took I me years and years I definitely exactly. agree with you I used to say I came empty-handed I didn't bring yes. anything and then I realized I came with lots of things and you illustrated that in dreamers with your backpack and your guitar and that actually made me realize that I came with lots of things, lots of memories, lots yes. of love, especially from my abuela, my language, my culture, my music. And so I think that's something important that we need to teach immigrants and everyone that immigrants come with lots of things to offer, that mm -hmm. we don't come here to take, we're here to offer things, our gifts, our talent, our love. Yes. So exactly. Yeah, I had the same, the same, I used to say the same things for long, many years, I would say, I, I brought nothing, nothing, I didn't even bring regalitos for the people who received me, I brought nothing, and then when I realized just how false that is, and how that put us in a place, especially children, when they are put in a place where, where they are not acknowledged of their value, uh, then, then we are we are not taking advantage of of the shine and all the gifts that all children bring because we don't sometimes we don't know how to acknowledge them. So for me, making dreamers and also making a bright star, I felt like it was important that that we acknowledge how grateful we are that children, especially children come to a place like the United States. That's right. I, I agree. I definitely agree. Oh, and you too. So beautiful. Your books are so heartfelt and meaningful and they are why I love picture books. They are just so important. I'm so glad your books are in the world. Um, we do, I, I have some questions and we do have some comments and I want to encourage people to um, jump in and ask some questions to these two amazingly talented women. So, you know, please take this opportunity to ask some questions. Um, just some comments from Delia Ruiz. She says, Juji que libro tan bello. Uh, pardon my, my, my Spanish. Uh, such, such a well-told story. And to Areli, she says, I love this book. It's the representation we want to see in the publishing world. So yes, yeah, so important. Um, but I want to kind of start with something that Juji mentioned. She talked about the importance of children seeing this book. And I was wondering if you could tell us more about the children that, that are in your book. Who are they? And can you tell us about them? Yeah, the children in Bright Star, uh, they, they, of, of course, they represent every child, an uh, immigrant child children who are coming through the border trying to uh, find their way into the United States. Um, and then when I was making the illustrations for this book, what I did is I asked my children in my neighborhood uh, if they will help me. So I came to the Mercado. I have a, a market right by the corner of my house where a lot of families make their daily living there. They, like that's a place where they work and where they live. And not where they live, but I mean, they spend their day there. Um, so I went there and I say, uh, if they will help me do it. And so the children came and they posed for me so I could, based in the sketches that I had already made, the, I, I will ask them, okay, you maybe look at me, put your shoulder over something so that it will reflect the images I wanted to create for the book. Um, and so they, they did for me, those are Aliyah and Luis and all the children from my neighborhood, which was just a beautiful, beautiful thing to do because it we, we were doing the, I mean, we still are at the COVID times, uh, but in that moment, it was just like a, like a neighborhood thing to do together so that I could make this book. Can you imagine just how great it is to have my community uh, being part of it? Yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry, it makes it even more special for sure. Um, Areli, do you want to talk a little bit about your illustrations? You worked with Luisa Uriba. Do you, do you have a favorite spread in the book? Is there something that really is special and joyful to you? Um, Luisa, so talented. She has illustrated so many other children's books. I think one of my favorite children's books that she illustrated was Your Name is a Song. And I just felt extremely like lucky to have her bring my words to life. I would say like my favorite illustration, I think it changes, but it's always just uh, images with my abuela, um, of us uh, saying goodbye to each other, of uh, her trying to make me feel that yes, my emotions are real, that it's hard to lose your, your parents, right? They were, we were separated, but um, I think it's so beautiful how she illustrated it, all the details, I mean, of Mexico, like if you can see here, like La Virgencita, the flowers, the colors. I think she just did such a wonderful job of, of, of showing the beauty of Mexico, right? Because that's what I wanted to communicate in this book, that my life in Mexico was filled with so much love despite not having my parents with me, so much sunshine. And it was hard to leave all of that behind. So I think she just did such a wonderful job. And then just the cover alone, um, me, little me, in the middle of my two worlds, Mexico, the city skyline, and how I belong to both. And it's just, it's so wonderful to see that and to see uh, me, dark skin, a dark skin girl, morena, beautiful. And I think that should be communicated with their kids or students that you can see yourself in the book, that you're important. So I think it's so beautiful that I had Lisa to, to bring this book to life. Absolutely. I, I love all the cultural pieces. I, I find that in Juji's books as well. It's just, yeah. you find so much of that rich heritage there. Uh, Juji, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, something I've heard you say, um, that you, your books come from you not knowing something. And so you want to find out more about it. So what surprised you the most while you're doing the research for doing this book? A lot of things that I didn't know, uh, like when I started, I thought I was making a book about children, about families and people at the borderlands. And then what I realized is that when there are, whether there are physical walls or um, uh, border policies that create uh, a wall or something that is trying to stop people from crossing, it is. It will not only affect people. In fact, most people, uh, if they if they encounter um, um, uh, something that stops them from going through, what they do is they go to more dangerous places to find a way to through. But then the other thing that happens is that animals and plants are also affected, uh, like greatly affected, and. I didn't know that before. I didn't know that animals uh, for generations, for the whole existence, they have um, corridors that they, they, they these are places that allows them to go back and forth or move as freely as they need to find what they need to survive. But when a wall is built or there are put really bright lights or, uh, um, a road has been uh, created so the uh, the border patrols can can go back and forth. When those those things happen, animals cannot cross anymore, and they get stuck in either side of the border. And I, when I found that, I I understood just even more how connected we are. How really, really connected, we all are. So it is not enough that we try to create a better passage or a better immigrant experience for us humans, but as long as we are not also taking care of animals and our environment, uh, we are destroying all of our chances to have in the, the world that we want to have. Um, and that's when, that was one of the main things that really struck me. I think that's such a, an important message in your book. There's, there's so much in the book and it's so 
like the images are so beautiful and the words are sparse, but there's so much to talk about and for educators and families to talk about in the book. So I, I love that part of it. Thank you. Uh, Aureli, I've got a question for you. Um, so, you know, your book is the first of a kind by written by a, a DACA recipient. So why was it important for you to, to write this book now? Why, so I would love to hear more about that. So I believe DACA is a privilege, right? Not every single dreamer has the opportunity to apply for DACA and to get all those benefits like the social security number, the ability to work, to get a driver's license. And so I felt extremely privileged to have that, to be able to apply for DACA and to have those opportunities. Um, and one of the things you gain from getting that, that temporary, because DACA is temporary, a sense of protection or security is the ability to come out of the shadows and tell your story. Um, for so long, it's for many people, it's a secret. It's, it's a, you just don't feel safe telling people that you're undocumented. And so with DACA, I felt safe enough to tell my story, to write it down and to share it with the world because there's so many people who are still undocumented who have stories to tell and don't have that privilege. And so I wanted them to, to know that, hey, you're not alone. Um, your story might be so similar with mine and that it's important to, to tell our stories. And I want you to feel seen, to feel that your story matters too. And I, I dream of a world where we can use storytelling to, to, to tell our truth, to tell our experiences so we can connect with one another. So I think it was, so it was again, a privilege to have DACA and to be able to use that to share my own story. Yeah, and just to go off of that a little bit more, what do you think, what, mis mis what misunderstandings do you think that people have about DACA and DREAMers that you would want to clear up? Um, one of the misunderstandings is that there's a model DREAMer or a model DACA recipient that we are all good at school, that we go to college, but that's not true. There's different cir circumstances that we go through that don't allow us to do that or doors that are shut and we don't have access to certain spaces. And so I think I was definitely lucky to have a loving support system of great teachers, my parents, my family, who helps me achieve my dreams, helped me do good in school, helped me go to college, uh, write this book. Um, and so I think that's a big misconception that all dreamers are the same. We're not all the same. We all have different experiences. We, And so I think that needs to change. We need to make sure that dreamers have access to more spaces um, so that we can achieve our goals, so we can feel free. I think, I often think of my experience as a little bird in a cage. I'm allowed to fly within this cage, but I can't fly outside. And one day I hope to be able to soar the sky and, and fly freely and feel free. And I think lots of people long for that feeling. Well, oh, thank you. That is beautiful. Um, Shuji, is it true that it took you three years to work on this book? Were you, were you working it over, over for it over three years? And if so, you know, the world changed a lot in the last three years. So how did you and the book change over that time period? Yeah, it took me about three, almost three years. And even though it looks like a, a long time, it, it is not. <laughs> um, because, because I felt like I, I made it very, very fast. And somehow it felt like it was fast because I had to work long hours to create, especially the illustrations. But one of the things that was more, more difficult was uh, the concept of the book it gave me difficulties and I'm going to tell you why I I wrote most of the book like up until the time where the deer finds the wall you know, I knew I wanted to tell the story but then how do you end the story of a deer who has just been separated from her mother who has found that she cannot go through anymore to where she thought she was going and that now uh as we know that she also represents children. 
how do we finish a story where I don't tell, I don't, I don't lie to children. I'm not going to tell them like, yes, you are going to find your mother after this and everything is going to be fine. So you don't worry. You're going to go to school. You are going to be wholesome again. You're going to be all right. I really didn't know how to, how to accompany children without telling them things that might not happen. I knew that what I wanted was to be that, to be that companion, because we don't know what's gonna happen at the end. And in my case, I really searched everywhere. I asked a lot of people like, how do you do this? If you had gone through something so terrible, um, how do you heal again? And I, 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 it really took me a long time to have an answer for that. And in fact, I do not have an answer for that. I recognize that there is no an answer for it. But what I realize is that we have many answers. There are many things that we can do because this problem of children being separated or not being um, uh, allowed to come into the United States, it's something that ca cannot get solved with one single action. It only gets solved with many different things that we do. We Yes, we do have to see to the immigration policies and fight for them to be just. And But also we need to make sure that uh, the environment is not being destroyed for us to build walls, but also we need to make sure that there is um, uh, something that allows children to come into the United States without having to be separated from, from their families. So there are many, many things. And among them in the book, I was trying to offer some that feel just like very in the now, which is breathe in, breathe out. And let's let's be silent for a moment, so perhaps we can find and hear something that we need to hear at this moment. And my biggest one is, can we imagine a different world? Can we imagine a different, a new story? Not the one that we have always been living, but we are gonna have to make like a really jump in our imagination and thoughts, also in our actions to create a world that is not only the one that we have right now, but maybe we are going to have to have great, great imagination. And that's, those those were some of the things that made it uh, just longer and longer for me because I didn't know how to respond to this, uh, to the book, to the questions of this book. And I think that's okay because your book is such a great starting point. I think it's such an important, important starting point. And I know that families and educators are going to be able to use that really it's going to be so important thank you we do have a question um from anonymous the question is how would you recommend connecting these stories to young second and third generation students who may or may not know their family's immigration stories i'm a teacher of young bilingual students i love sharing your books Yuji, and i have just brought your book Aureli. so Aureli, do you want to start with that sure i i think the best way is to talk with people that you know, your community. Ask like your grandparents, there's grandparents, uncles, aunts to, to share those stories, to pass those along. Um, in the book, I talk about visiting Ellis Island um, and learning about the experiences of other immigrants who came to this country from different parts of the world. And so how at first I didn't, I didn't connect with them, but just being in the island, I was like, whoa, we, they also went through the same thing, having to learn a new language, having to, to adjust to a new culture, but also trying to keep their, their culture from their home country alive. So I think with second or third generation children, I think it's important to pass along those stories um, um, from, from relatives. So that would be my suggestion, asking, asking for stories and hearing stories from family. Shushi? Yeah, I was thinking how important it is not only for children to be able to recognize that their, their, their stories are part of some books written by us, but also to recognize that even if they are, those are not their stories, they are still very valid. That even if they are other people's stories, 
we 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 can pay attention to them we can get to know we can even celebrate the triumphs of other people because that's something so important that happens like when we make a book seems like like it is only going to be for latinx children it's only going to be for for the immigrant children or the ones who speak spanish but how beautiful when any other child can go and see the experiences of other people and still see how it relates to our own stories, how connected we are, how their stories affect also our own stories. And we also have an opportunity even to cheer and clap for other stories, for other protagonists that are not always the same protagonist is not only the ones that that look like us but also the the experiences of others so i would think that for a uh, third fourth generation children even if they don't see themselves there they can still appreciate that the story says something about all of us and i i, I will stay with that I can't think of a better way to finish up our conversation. That is such a wonderful answer. I think, like you said, this is a book for everyone. Your book, Aureli's book, in combination. I just want to show them again. Aureli is a dreamer. And Bright Star. They are such beautiful books. And you can get a link to purchasing the books in the chat there. Um, thank you for everyone is here today. I know we had some viewers and we had some questions and we had a wonderful conversation. So I know this is being recorded and I hope people will be able to use it in their classroom and jumpstart some wonderful conversations with their, with their kids. So thank you both so much for being here. We really appreciate this wonderful conversation you've started and I know it's gonna continue and I know these books are gonna get into classrooms and into families' hands and they're gonna be read and uh, cherished. So thank you both so much for being here. My pleasure and so good to be with you, Areli. Gracias por este momento. Gracias. Es un honor estar aquí. I'm so proud, um, honored, and it's so special. Again, your books felt me, made me feel seen, made me feel like I mattered. And so I, I have to say, you inspired this book. So thank you so much. Muchas gracias, Judy. And I just want to say hi to Lee and Laura and Delia and Carlos who joined us. Um, Thank you so much. Thank you.